now you know the games that I picked that were the worst for gameplay and review for 2022 from 10 to 6. Now it's time to get to the top 5. And of course I'm going to destroy these games after I tell you why I put them on the list. So let's get to it. My top 5 worst games that I reviewed for game plan review for 2022. Now this game is considered to be one of the worst games that was released last year. When we get to the game, so far the graphics don't look that good. No, oh my god, the frame rate's awful. That frame rate's awful. Oh my goodness. That was really choppy. Really, really choppy. Probably not supposed to go that way. Oh. Never mind about the gameplay so far. That sucked. Oh, man. You have to go right to the beginning spot. Oh, my goodness. This frame rate's awful. This frame rate's awful. And it really is. Do I have to get this key? Can I get more than one key? So I have to go back to get the key. I have to go back to get the stinking key. Oh, brilliant. Oh, that is brilliant. Now I get the stinking key. So far, I don't like this game at all. Time to go back to get the stick and key! Oh, and it doesn't come back. Oh, bro, it doesn't come back. It doesn't give you a stick and key. Oh, it's just like a flutter jump like Yoshi. That's pathetic. A flutter jump. A flutter jump. Is that the best you can do to the people that made this game? Flutter jump, just like Yoshi. Ah! Son of a bitch. I want to find the sticking people that made this game. I, I feel like I don't want to play the game further. What's this one? Oh, I need a key. I need a sticking key to unlock the sticking sucker. Oh, I hate that. I really hate that. Trying to get a key. To get a character. I thought I already got the key. Oh, it was for that thinking thing. Oh, this game pisses me off to no end. No creativity whatsoever. <laughs> and because of the awful frame rate, and the fact that you have to use keys to unlock these costumes. Having a flutter jump with Jumping Jack. When that's been used before in another character. All those elements, as a result, makes me give Bullshit Wonder World a red card. Yep. I thought this was going to be actually number one. I thought this was going to be the worst game that I reviewed for Game Plan Review for 2022. But then, of course, other games had to come after that were worse than this. But this, of course, is shit. 
That is right. I hate this game. And I did play it a few more times after doing my game plan review for this. And it still sucks. The biggest problem that I had is easily this. The creators decided to copy Super Mario Odyssey and put it into a game. And they made this. They copied Super Mario Odyssey. Just to make this piece of shit. It's a ripoff of Super Mario Odyssey. And it fails on every conceivable level. Now, it's still playable, but the gameplay sucks. And there was no question about it. You now know why I put this on the list. There's no question about it. It deserved to be on the list. It's definitely one of the worst Nintendo Switch games that I've ever played. And that is because they decided to copy Super Mario Odyssey, the creators of this game. No question about it. And thankfully, I don't have to play this particular game. I'm still going to keep it in my collection, but I don't have to play it anymore. I'm probably going to get rid of whatever I have on my hard drive of this particular game off my Switch. It's going to go off my Switch, and I don't have to play this crappy game game anymore or should I say shitty game it really doesn't matter and this ticket sucks they give you a sticking ticket they give you this I'd rather just burn this sucker but I'm not going to do that because it's part of the packaging but it still sucks anyway I have the game right in it but of course even though I'm keeping a copy of this I'm going to destroy this game right now. I really should destroy it in real life. Just burn this thinking sucker. But I'm not going to do that. But there is another way I'm going to destroy it. So here we go. All right, it's now time to see what is number four. Now, I think I remember that one of my friends on Facebook talked about Elf. For the Game Boy Advance. And I said at one time that I was going to do it. And I was thinking about doing it for a Christmas episode. And guess what? I am doing it. Alright. I, I don't really care for the graphics that much. So far, the controls are fine. One hit, and that was it. So I do lose some life. This is... Okay, this... Oh, so I have to go back. So even if I get hit, I have to go back. I can't just continue on there. That just sucks. And I, what I can do? Nothing. So I gotta jump over them. Great. Okay, so those are the checkpoints. Great. Brilliant. 
I did it again. Fuck. Ah, uh, Merry fucking Christmas. Yeah. Fuck. So far this game. And that's the... That's the... That's one of the problems with this game. Why can't you... No, you gotta go back to a certain point. Bullshit. And the problem is you can't see what you're doing. Nothing wrong with the controls, it's just the problem is you can't see what what you're fucking doing. I'm up so high, you don't see? I'm gonna die if, because of this fucking bullshit. These fucking platforms! What the fuck? Fucking A. And let me guess, I have to do this all fucking over again. Yep, I have to do it all fucking over. Fucking brilliant. Yep. And once you get hit once, guess what? You have to go all the way back to a certain point. Bullshit. I don't know what I'm supposed to fucking do. I'd like to see film and stuff do a video on this fucking game. Fucking hell. Oh, fuck you. What the fuck? Where is... What the f... Wait, can you go that way? No. Oh, f... I'm done. I am done. Fuck this game. Well, there's only one positive with the game, and that's the controls. The controls are fine. The controls are fine. Everything else goes down the drain. The rest is absolute garbage. That is right. The last red card that I gave for gameplay and review for 2022, Elf the Movie the Game, is higher than Bale and Wonderworld. I could have put Bale and Wonderworld higher, but the thing about it is, Elf the Movie the Game is actually worse. And that is because of its boring gameplay. The minigame sucked. And I got so frustrated with the game that I didn't want to play anymore. And you're totally defenseless. You have no weapons. And once you get hit, you end up having to go back to a checkpoint. You're not even allowed to continue on at the spot where you got hit. Those were the main reasons why I ended up putting this game a lot higher than Bale and Wonderworld. Elf the movie, the game is a complete failure. And as a result, it deserved to be higher than Bale and Wonderworld and higher on the countdown. And as a result of being on this countdown, I have to destroy Elf, the movie, the game. So let's get to it. Let's destroy the sucker. All right, let's get to number three.
this is a series of games. I actually downloaded the third game first, and then I downloaded the other two. Since I did find out that they were a series. See, look. I'm not even touching anything. Is that pathetic if you uh, let that go on the left side of the screen and move left until you can move it to a new position? That's just plain weird. What's that? Map terminal okay, light on. South door unlocked. Oh, now it's finally giving me the map. It's finally giving me the stinking map. No. So far, I, I don't. And I'm back to where I am. What the fuck? So far, this series is not looking good at all. Come after me. Come on. Come after me. Come on. I'm right fucking here. Come on. What the f Oh, about time. Come towards me. I don't give a shit. It's about fucking time. Another problem is they put the sticking story on the Wii U gamepad. Okay, all it says is your mission is to find a way. I can't believe that I'm sticking reading this to you guys. You guys, I have, have no sticking. Well, I was going to read it to you anyway. But I have no sticking choice because you can't see it on the TV screen. It's just pathetic. And it looks like the same fucking screen, just like with the last fucking game. And this is what the Wii U gamepad looks like. This looks like the same fucking screen. It means the developers didn't even try to make it look different like it's another game. No, they have to make the same fucking screen all over again. And it's probably not going to let me go to the sticking map screen. No. No. That was the biggest problem with the first game, is that it didn't allow you to go to the map screen anytime you want. No, you have to go in one of these terminals to find, uh, to see the map. It's ridiculous. That was the biggest problem. And it's still the biggest problem here! Alright, that's an improvement. That's an improvement right there. I finally get a sticking map screen. And that's also an improvement, by the way. Too bad it wasn't in, in, even in the first game. But it's still the same fucking game. It's still the same fucking game. But you added a gun to it. I'm going to go this side. Nope. That's the other problem with this game. You don't know which door you're going because of the layout of the actual game. You don't. You could be going backwards. This series blows. No matter which is in the series, all three gets a red card. Now you didn't expect me to put a series on this particular countdown, did you? Well, I had no choice. I couldn't pick one game. I had to pick the entire series. And that, of course, is the RTO series. All three games were terrible. And all these games are actually on the 3DS as well. And that's unfortunate because I don't even recommend the ones that are on the 3DS. I think they're the exact same games, so it really makes no point of having them. 
And the only reason why I didn't put this particular series at either number two or number one is because of the third game and because of the other two games that are on the countdown. And that is because the third game was not as bad as the first two games, but it was too little, too late. There were certain things that I liked about the third game that I didn't with the first two games. Because the third game actually had a map that you were allowed to see on the Wii U gamepad, which I did like. But that wasn't enough to save the game. And of course, because you have the first two games being terrible, there was really no point of making a third game. So I gotta tell you creators, why did you make these games in the first place? Why did you have to make a third game when the first two games are actually terrible? Making a third game, there was really no point. Because the first two games, if people are not going to like the first two games, then what's the point of making a third? What's the point? But I will tell you the worst of the three is, of course, the second game. I did not like the second game at all. I really hated the second game. The second game was much worse than the first and the third game. But still, all three games are terrible. And as a result, I had to put the entire RTO series on this countdown. But thankfully, I don't have to play them anymore. Thankfully, I can destroy them for you guys. I'm going to destroy all three games because they are not worthy of your time. And thank God. And by the way, this is the last Wii U game on my list. Because the thing about it is, this, was the, this series were the worst Wii U games that I played. And even though 2023 is going to be the last where you're going to be able to download games from the Wii U eShop, there are certain games out there that don't deserve to be downloaded legally. And thank God, the RTO series, when it roams around, when the Wii U eShop is closed for the final time, you won't have to experience these three awful games that I had to play for you guys, to review for you guys. But the good news is, I get to destroy them. So here we go. Now, I will say, even though I'm not happy that the Wii U eShop is closing, I'm at least happy that certain games on the Wii U eShop will no longer be downloaded legally that are terrible, like the RTO series that I had to endure in 2022. Because the thing about it is, there shouldn't be games like that and the games that are considered terrible should be wiped off the list. No question about it. Unless, of course, you're willing and able 
to play these games and then shit on them afterward. But now that I'm done with the RTO series and now that I'm done with all the Wii U games that I have on this countdown because the final two games are Switch games. The final two games are download only Switch titles. And now it's time to get to number two. This was a launch title, but not in the United States. This wasn't released until a month later. And surprisingly enough, it's one of the first, as I know, bad games for the Switch. One of the very first bad games for the Switch that was ever released. Are you the, are you the first time to play this game? Are you playing this game for the first time that really should say? I don't like the graphics, I will tell you that. The graphics, to me, suck. Okay, you can fly, never mind. This is slow, though. Oh, wow, this thing is so sticking slow. Now, let's try this sucker, see if it's any better. This is still slow. Got a terrible noise too. Okay. Now I know why this is terrible. <sighs> now I know why people hate it. Look. This is nothing. This is really nothing. People sticking slow. Can't go fast. And that's the first big problem with this. Let's see if I go on the ground and right? go faster. No. No, 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 no. I thought this game would be at least fun. It's I'm gonna say this, it's playable, yes. Fun, no. Black things. Problem is, where's the fun? Uh, that's it. The problem with this game is nothing. There is really nothing to it. It's just too easy. It means you're gonna win no matter what. If there's no challenge, then what's the point? There's no challenge. If they would have made this a challenging game, it would probably would have been a lot fun. See, look at that. Look at that. That's nothing. Why make a game that m makes things so easy they can easily beat them? That sometimes makes a game not fun. This game is where you take Superman 64 and you put it with big rigs. If it's going to be this easy, like big rigs, that's a problem. And as a result, I have no choice but to give Broom in the Night Sky a red card. Broom in the Night Sky is number two. It did not make number one because the thing about it is, at least the creators took two bad games and just made it bad because the thing about it is this game is a combination of if you are taking Superman 64 and you are making it a game I, I forgot what the other game is called there was two games that I did mention in that review that I talked about and I said those two games are a combination and I know one of them was Superman 64 I can't think of the other particular game that I was oh I remember 
I remember now. This is a game if you are taking big rigs with Superman 64 and putting it into a game. That's what Broom in the Night Sky is. It's a combination of big rigs and Superman 64. Where you're taking a racing game and you're just flying through rings. That's essentially what Vroom in the Night Sky is. That's all that it is. Two bad games being put into a bad game. But at least it was a game. And there's a huge reason why this is not number one. And that's because the number one game that I put is even worse than this. But I will say, this game does belong on my countdown. And I will say, it's definitely one of the worst Nintendo Switch games that I've ever played. It was so boring that there was no choice. There was no choice whatsoever. And it's even worse than the RTO series because at least the third game had something but it, the third the, the third RTO game was terrible it still was terrible but for Rome in the Night Sky is even worse than that and that's the big reason why I put Rome in the Night Sky over the RTO series for the second slot and it's because I just found no enjoyment whatsoever and all of the vehicles that you use are slow as fuck no question about it the vehicles that you get are slow as fuck and that was another problem that I had with room in the night sky that made it less fun and all just having a combination of two terrible games and making it into a terrible game gives it its slot on this list. And now I can officially destroy it. And I will say so far Room in the Night Sky is the worst game that was released in 2017 for the Switch. The, the first and by the way, this is considered the first bad Nintendo Switch game of all time. The first really bad Nintendo Switch game of all time. And I finally got to review it in December. And there's no question about it. It deserves a lot of the hate. No question about it. And it was ranked number one as the worst Nintendo Switch game by WatchMojo.com. Is it the worst game, like I said, for the Switch? No, because there's another Nintendo Switch game that's even worse than this. And I bet you, if WatchMojo.com was re-ranking these, Room in the Night Sky would probably be number two. Because my number one is a Nintendo Switch game that's even worse than this. But first, before I get to that game, I have to destroy Vroom in the night sky. So here we go. Let's burn. Or I shouldn't say burn. Let's destroy this sucker. We're not going to burn it. We're going to destroy this sucker. So here we go. Now that Vroom in the Night Sky has been destroyed, it is now time to see which Nintendo Switch game got number one. 